possession of the ball. They want to dictate play. They'll be challenged tonight. Syracuse will try and make that difficult. Moment of remembrance gets us started at SU Soccer Stadium. J.C. Griggs, our head referee, blows his whistle to set things in motion. Wake Forest in the all-white away kits. Gets us started. Wake attacking the left end. And Syracuse immediately puts the pressure on. It's Christian Escribano, the right back, flicking it right off Nathan Apoku. So I think you're going to see both teams come out and want to get off to obviously a great start. Um, we'll see how the first five minutes plays out. But Wake will want to control the play by keeping the ball. Syracuse is going to make it uncomfortable for him. Speaking of uncomfortable, there's Anthony Sinclair on the back of Baba Niang. And SU's off and running. Down the middle of the field towards Jonah Labeled on the outside. Labeled the lefty with the cross. It's headed away. Prince and Ponsa. One of Wake's two center backs there. A Wake team that loves to play a free-flowing style. Dean, you reference Barcelona's tiki-taka famed of the Pep, Bar uh, the Pep Guardiola era when we were chatting earlier. They love to pass the ball. But Bobby Muse told us in the midweek that Wake and its 1-0 win over Jacksonville completed over 600 passes. Well, they're a team that, again, wants to play through thirds of the field, you, you know, and the old saying, you know, there's two teams and there's one ball. They want to be the team playing with the ball, not the team chasing it. So, um, you know, they're going to try and keep the ball. They're going to try and dictate play and work the ball around, try and unbalance a, a Syracuse defense and eventually try and penetrate in the final third. Syracuse early applying the pressure. That's Nathan Apoku, the Cuse's leading goal scorer, getting on the Demon Deke center backs. So right off the bat, Syracuse is not going to let them, they're not going to sit back and let them play. They're going to step up and press, make them play through all 10 field players, make them play 110, 120 yards of the field to get through to their goal, and they've just done it. There's Jelani Forbes into the box, his cross right to Booster Schobert. Five orange shirts surrounding Bob and Niang, who is the only Demon Deacon in the box. So Jelani Forbes right from the start establishing himself as a guy who's going to get forward out of that left back position for Wake. Baselli plays it forward, almost found a Poku. A Garrison Tubbs, a consistent presence in that center backfield for Wake Forest. He started all 11 games this season and played in 21, all 21 last year. Colin Thomas slips through a nice ball. He was looking for Roald Mitchell the leading scorer for this Demon Deacon squad. Tops in the ACC with six goals. Colin Thomas slips a nice ball through. He's looking for roll, but, uh, you know, an imposing Russell Shealy comes up and reads it early. And maybe comes up and makes Booster sure. Schoberg with a little tug of jersey as well. Expect to be see a lot of physicality from this Syracuse squad. A team with the best defense in the ACC, allowing under a half goal per game. And Russell Shealy is saving almost 90% of shots that come his way. Syracuse is doing a good job of keeping Wake in their half. That's Kachevsky on the ball. It gets popped away. And Wake can step up its back line. And you'll see Wake kind of push up and push out. They, too, would like to press if they can press. Any long balls that get played into their back four, it's important, Coach Muse said, to make sure that their midfielder goal side and able to win and clean up those second headers that initially get cleared out by their back four. Labeled with another streaking run, he's shut down. Garrison Tubbs dribbles out of the back and feeds it off for Colin Thomas on the right wing. Wake not afraid to play through this. Confident on the ball, technical team. Here's Ponsa, one of two New York, New York players on the Demon Deacons. He's from the Bronx. Takuma Suzuki, keep an eye on him in the wake midfield in the number six position, sitting in front of the back four. He's the key to them 
unlocking and getting out, at least through that first line of pressure that Syracuse puts out there. Ball up towards Vlad Willen and Russell Shealy with a strong header away. Outside the 18, SU goalie forced to adapt to some unusual measures. Shealy does a good job of reading plays early, puts out fires before they become fires. That's an example of it. His goalie coach, Chad Little, said he's great in coming off the line. Saw that there. Another look at Forbes. Noah Singleman takes the ball off him. Singleman, a very versatile midfielder for this SU squad, plays it towards Levante Johnson, and the Seattle transfer was offsides. Wake Forest 10-1-0 this season. There's head coach Bobby Muse. He's looking for his 200th career win. Bobby Muse, just a, a, a great, great job at Wake. He's really done a, a great job in establishing them, not, not only as a top team this year, but he's gone on and really established them for the last number of years as one of the top teams. He's a great recruiter, great communicator, great coach. Gets the most out of his players. He's put a lot of people at the next level in the MLS. Wakes also had top two recruiting classes in the past two seasons. A talent always coming in and leaving for the Demon Deeks. Lorenzo Baselli takes a tumble and draws a whistle. J.C. Griggs calls the first foul of the match. And Baselli will have an increased role today. Colin Byros not in the starting lineup for the Orange. Well, Syracuse doing a good job here early on. Keeping the ball, controlling the tempo. Wake yet to find their rhythm. Another change for SU. Christian Curdy starting at the left center back spot. And he's part of a great defense for SU that's allowing under a goal per game, under a half goal per game at that, the seven clean sheets tied for the best in all of soccer. Kachevsky pings it forward towards the head of Abdi Salim. It's tapped away. The Syracuse defense, again, we mentioned at the outset, five goals given up all year. I mean, even you can kind of characterize those. One was a penalty kick. One was an own goal. Um, so really, through the run of play, they're a difficult team to score on. And, uh, you know, it's emphasized by the fact they've got three center backs who, and another one who can come off the bench who are very solid, big, strong, athletic. Curdy's played left center back. He's played in the center midfield, and he's also played on the right wing. A very versatile piece. Here's Noah Singleman. SU starting right wing back today. Lefty tip towards Johnson over everyone's head. Syracuse getting off to a good start early on, able to kind of control the play a little bit here and actually get Wake into their half of the field and, and not letting them progress, not letting them get in any kind of a rhythm. Immediate pressure from Apoku, but Ponce gets it away. Sinclair and Niang battle for it. It's poked towards Rold Mitchell. And one option, that's Thomas on the far side. White jersey is coming on late. Lefty cross deep towards Wallent. The freshman still has space. Wallent and Salim. And Syracuse's experienced defender takes the ball off the freshman. Another chance. Ian McIntyre on the sideline says, don't foul. Forbes chips it in. A dangerous plot, but SU gets ahead away. A counterattacking chance. Apoku. Suzuki marking him. A nutmeg, Apoku still going. What foot skill from Nathan Apoku to hold up play. It's still on for Syracuse. Here's Johnson, one on one with Mpanza. Johnson towards the touchline, the cross, right behind another Orangeman. Syracuse, a quick counter attack, but the reinforcement's not there to help out Levante Johnson. Sure, uh, good counter attack by Syracuse. It's still beyond. Johnson gets it poked away. Kachevsky tries the righty shot right at Trace Alfin. And the weight goalie with strong palms slows things down. Syracuse doing a good job coming out of defending a, a really good possession by Wake. Able to progress up the field and actually end up with a pretty good look at goal here. Kachevsky with a good strike on goal. Alfin, no problem, though, taking the shot. Forbes plays it ahead early. It's deflected by Singleman. 
senior from Georgia, up towards Johnson, the SU assist leader. So this is another important possession for Wake Forest. They've had a little bit of a tough time hanging on to the ball and keeping it and, and you know, exchanging passes. Syracuse has really done very well to interrupt after the second or third pass. Dean, just looking out on the field right now, it's very compact. Everyone's in the middle third. Well, and Syracuse doing a really good job of not giving Wake Forest time on the ball. The Orange pushing forward. Kachevsky has it blocked. Tried the righty curler. Scored a fantastic goal like that a couple of games ago against Tech. Chance to settle down. Wake not pressing that high. It's the tenth meeting between these two sides. In five of the ten meetings, Wake has been a top ten team. Jonah Labeled running at the Demon Deacon defense has touched too long. It goes right to Alfin. Wake Al Forest leads this season series five, two, and two. The last time the Demon Deacons traveled to SU Soccer Stadium, Syracuse upset the number one overall team in the country, beat them 2-0 in 2018. Syracuse a very difficult team to play here at home. They've actually done well on the road this year as well, but this is a tough place to play. Great atmosphere, cool night, especially with ACC teams coming in here, maybe not accustomed to the cool weather. Ian McIntyre's squad might be a bit more adjusted to under 50 degrees with a double-digit mile-per-hour wind blowing towards the back right corner of the field. This team's playing Tuesday, now playing Friday. After that loss to Cornell, Coach McIntyre said they're not looking to feel sorry for themselves, but right now they're facing possibly the best team they'll play all year. And it's a, it's a difficult road, college soccer, it's a short season. Johnson with fancy skill, the cross, Alfin taps it down, almost in the net, Syracuse players calling for it. But J.C. Griggs doesn't budge. Alfin palmed it down, and Garrison Tubbs was on the line to get it away. Nice job by Levante to get through and whip across. A dangerous ball. Labeled back on it to Apoku's feet. Early pressure from Syracuse on the goal line. Apoku to Johnson, he's on sides, chance in the box, and that's a penalty! Johnson went down, and J.C. Griggs immediately pointed to the spot. This is an important moment in this game. Apoku cuts a ball to Johnson. Johnson goes to cut it inside and gets clipped. That's Mponsa getting his left ankle. Two players colliding. And the result is a penalty kick. Looks like it's Giorgio Kachevsky with the ball right now for SU. Nathan Apoku took a PK against Cornell in the 89th minute and converted. That's the only one the Orange have had this year. Important moment again, as we said in this game, you know, a goal will change the complexion. We'll see how both teams react, but you got to convert the penalty kick first. Trace Alphen. No stranger to penalty kicks. Athletic, quick. He's a great shot stopper. We'll see his reaction on this. Kachevsky's first penalty. A massive chance for Syracuse with its dominant defense to go ahead early. Kachevsky converts! Kachevsky placed the ball. Difficult for any goalkeeper to get at this. He hits it with pace, he hits it in the corner. A missile to the bottom left corner. Trey Alfin can't touch it. This ball's hit with pace. Even as Alfin guesses right, it's hit with enough pace that it, and far enough out of his reach that it gets by him. Great finish. 
and certainly this will change the complexion of this game. We'll see how both teams react. Goal early on in the game will now impact both teams to what extent we'll see at this moment. Wait, perhaps we'll play with a little bit more urgency, start to lock in. Not ideal, obviously, in their situation to, to give up a goal early in the game. My question for you, Dean, does Syracuse sit back and rest for a second, or does Ian McIntyre's squad go for a second? Bob and Yang on goal, and Shealy makes a diving stop to his right. Well, I know Coach McIntyre, and I know the Syracuse team, they won't sit back. They're, this is There's so much, you know, there's a long way to go in this game, and it's not in their nature. And when you defend like they do, you can afford to go forward. They'll keep playing. It's too early to sit back. It's a weight team that certainly can score in bunches. 31 goals this year, most in the country. Second in all of soccer with almost four assists per game. 19 different Demon Deacons players have registered an assist this year. They put up six against the defending national champion, Clemson Tigers. And that was a very back and forth game. I mean, Coach Moose would be the first to, to say they were clinical on the day in terms of their finishing opportunities. Clemson had some of their own but that's the nature of ACC games. Teams are good enough, they're talented. Uh, both these teams are, are, have a ton of talent. Uh, you'll see a lot more scoring chances in this game and it's gonna, as always, come down to who executes in front of the goal. Schoberg keeps the ball in the right half. There's Kachevsky, another chance, chips it over the top. Excuse me, that was Baselli with the attempt outside the 18. Baselli's been a real positive filling in with Colin Byros. Good ball by Kachevsky into Baselli. Baselli just sidesteps, tries to snap one off. Pressure on Alfin. He has to do a little fancy footwork to avoid Nathan Apoku. Put the ball back behind him to keep it away from SU Stryker. That first ball out after defending, Wake can't really get their foot on it the usual ball that might go up the road or might go into a midfielder to start their possession. You know, people say, what's the most important pass in, in a possession? Well, it's always the first one, because if you don't complete the first one, you don't have the ball. And Wake struggled a little bit to get that first pass. Rold Mitchell almost took it off Schoberg, but that's a frustration foul. A push in the back of Abdi Salim. Mitchell's been a non-factor through the first 15 minutes, and I think this is a result. Yeah, a little bit of a push. Abdi probably embellished it a little bit, but nonetheless, it's a foul, and they move on. A little bit of frustration there from Mitchell. He's not seen much of the ball yet. Um, you know, again, that, that first ball out to him has got to be delivered, and he needs help around him to just get that first pass and that first possession under him. Mitchell's one of three players in the ACC with over 30 shots, but he hasn't scored since mid-September. Found the back of the net against Clemson and George Mason. I think Six that, goals in three games. Yeah, and I, I think that goes to show you, too, the, the depth that they have and the, the balance that the, the Wake Forest team has. I mean, they've won games along the way. They don't depend solely on him to score goals. Um, he's a threat, but as you mentioned, a lot of people figuring into the scoring for Wake, but they're going to have to. They're going to have to get on task here. Chance for Mitchell to run. Christian Curdy clips his ankles, and Mitchell goes down. Syracuse keeps its line high. Name we haven't called much tonight yet is Baba Yang. Guy who Wake really consistently will go to in important moments to, to come up with big plays. And there he is right here, right on cue. The eight plays it to ball. Forbes. Chance for a cross. Schoberg there. Ever reliable booster Schoberg. Six foot five, man's the middle of the SU back line. It's Jelani, Jelani Forbes getting forward again out of his left back position. You know, Wake has their wide players tuck in a little bit. That opens up lanes for Forbes and Escribano, the wide backs at the back of the team to get forward. They haven't had much of an opportunity to do that because they haven't had much of the ball today. 
This is Wake's first corner of the game. Ryan Fessler will serve it in. The Wake team that's taken 82 corner kicks, second in the country behind Ohio State. Here's Fessler's service. In the middle, Sheely, a strong punch. Ryan Fessler filling in for a couple of missing midfielders on this Wake side. Both Jose Kojima and Cooper Flax, players that Bobby Muse would love to have controlling things in the center, not available today. Flax and Kojima, too, are, are players, important pieces of the puzzle for Wake. They're, they're guys who provide, you know, a lot of good passing. They're good passers of the ball. They facilitate the possession play and they're both very good at actually getting forward out of those central midfield positions and running in behind an opponent's back four. But as we can see, you need the ball to, to sort of capitalize on these strengths that we're talking about with Wake, and right now they haven't seen a lot of it. A chance to build from the back here for Bobby Muse's team. Forbes puts it up front, but not on the same page with Mitchell. Syracuse doing a good job in the midfield, keeping those midfield, central midfield players under pressure, not allowing them to the time they need to pick their head up and pick out the next pass. They really fight them for their first touch on the ball, which really eliminates their vision and ability to kind of move the ball. Some time for Vlad Willen, a standout freshman from Colorado. Baselli, great job reacting. The ball is lost. He puts pressure on him immediately. They can't establish the possession because they're fighting to still keep the ball. Lent highlighted in the midweek by head coach Bobby Muse for his constant work rate. Coach says something that's, you barely see it with young players. Mitchell running onto it towards the goal. Just wide left. Sheely slightly indecisive in that. Almost a golden opportunity for Wake Forest's leading scorer. So Roald Mitchell is a handful. He in battling for this ball, staying with it, running through it, getting his last touch on it just a little bit wide and high. But that goes to show you the, the danger he can present, you know, when left alone. And to be honest, he had, you know, Booster Schubert hanging on him. And Abdi Salim came across too, got a head on it, but didn't quite get it right. Instant pressure in the midfield from Syracuse, and the Orange now take possession. 6 2 Mitchell can be a handful. Guys, make sure we're moving. Hey! Seen a lot of Jonah labeled early. He's got another chance to run it. Christian Escribano. Early ball in, not there, but SU can re rack. There's Johnson dropping a little deeper. As Wake clears it out, we welcome in Syracuse head coach Ian McIntyre. Coach, how you doing? Good. It's just on a right and get a bit wet here. But uh, other than that, it's, it's, it's a fun ACC game. You can't mind the rain when you're up a goal. Uh, what's your strategy going forward now that you are up 1-0? I don't think anything changes right now. Um, look, um, it's important that we try to get pressure on the ball. There's going to be transitional moments. There's going to be moments like this where, look, they're a terrific team with so much pace. And our best form of defense right now is, I think, to get after and go forward a bit. Coach, you've done a great job coming out and playing hard and actually controlling the first part of this game. The midfield has done a great job in kind of locking down on their central midfield. Do they keep that going? Is that something you guys focused on early in the game? Yes, look, I, I think it's um, we did a good job of, uh, of disrupting them and getting some pressure on the ball. And, and I think there's some spaces in midfield um, that we are, you know, we just had a chance there. If we can change it side to side, Dean, I think we can cause them some problems. But obviously, they're, they're a terrific team that can cause us problems going the other way. And I think they're trying to isolate uh, the nine on Booster a little bit. So it's important he gets them, you know, and I think he's been terrific. Uh, but let's get some help around him. But uh, look, uh, this is a fun one, guys, and I'm sure you're enjoying it out there. Absolutely. That's SU head coach Ian McIntyre. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
You mentioned that booster schoberg rolled mitchell matchup, Dean. We've seen it evolve over the past couple of minutes with Wake targeting the center forward a bit more. Well, I think, you know, more balls up to roll Mitchell's feet will, would create, you know, more of that matchup. But Syracuse has done a good job cutting it out at the source. Anthony Sinclair, relentless, plays it forward for Apoku, still there. And by that I mean, you know, they're, they're unable to find his feet with the ball because the players, you know, that would be passing it to him are under pressure. They, they don't have the luxury of picking their head up to try and find him. And, you know, that, that cuts out, you know, the source of service to, to a very dangerous player, an important person in their attack. Forbes plays it forward. Mitchell has a chance. Schoberg there. The shot stopped. Shealy falls down. Mitchell right on the back line. Could have been a call for offsides, but... Russell Shealy has been strong early on. And so Jelani Forbes playing a wonderful ball over the top that just curls in behind Booster Schoberg. That's the other way to sort of get to it. If you can't find his feet, then maybe you play balls in behind, as was an example there by Forbes. Great ball and a well-timed run by Mitchell to get on the end of it. Shealy up to the task. Jelani Forbes with five assists this season leads the Demon Deacons. Seen him highlighted early on up and down the near side of the field. Christian Curdy plays it in, looking for Baselli, and Ponza heads it in. It's an own goal. Well, that early pressure that we've seen. It started right at the beginning of the game with balls served into the box, labeled early on and other players. It wears on you, and here, a weight mistake turns into an own goal. And Ponza headed it away from Trace Alfit. Not much communication there either. Not much communication, but also the, the pressure here by Baselli, believe it or not. You know, you can feel a defender or an attacker, in this case, on your back, and all of a sudden, um, you know, it does become critical that you head it, and you do head it with, with that pressure. You can't put it where you want, and, uh, you know, a mistake is made. Things starting to slide for Wake Forest. Damon Deacons also had a player go off the field, substituted off. Vlad Wallent leaves, and David Rona in. And now Garrison Tubbs is booked. Bistelli with a strong run forward. He goes down. Another promising position. First yellow of the game for either side. Garrison Tubbs. And Bistelli is good with the ball at his feet, driving at players. He does so here. Gets a touch in early ahead of the defender, Tubbs. And he gets clipped. It'll be a dangerous set piece for Syracuse. Syracuse can really build on this momentum if there's, you know, if they're smart here they're going to try and keep the pressure on wake has got to has got to be resilient here they got to hold the fort regroup and get themselves on track i was going to say get back on track but i'm, I'm not sure they've been on track yet today wake team you don't see go down often anthony sinclair directing some traffic Baselli, who won the free kick, standing over. Lorenzo Baselli can be dangerous on these set pieces. The setup right now looks like he might have a go at goal. Baselli, he'll try slightly over the crossbar. It's a good attempt trying to get it over the wall. He got it over the wall, but as always, you know, the other, the other half of that set pieces you got to get it down under the bar difficult to do doesn't miss by much slightly over 25 yards out a worthwhile try up to nil there's the mitchell schoberg matchup again booster slows down play wins the ball for syracuse Syracuse doing a really good job of contesting balls, you know, that are passed between the Wake players. Wake ideally doesn't want to be driving with the ball. They want to move the ball, connect, make their passes, 
move a team by moving the ball from one player to the next with increased speed of play, and they've been unable to do that. Syracuse doing a great job themselves of winning the ball and then not just winning it and keeping it, but getting at the, the weak defense. The Orange and Demon Deacons with contrasting styles, but both right now playing for the top of the ACC. Syracuse three and one in conference play, as are the Demon Deacons. And the winner today sits atop the ACC Atlantic. SU has two con three conference games after this, and Wake Forest does as well. But a much tougher road for the Demon Deacons still to come. We've got UVA and Louisville in the final two games. Louisville number 11 in the country, nothing to sleep on. And Virginia came here and took down Syracuse. It's another good ball, and again, a, a way that perhaps Wake is going to have to think about getting forward against Syracuse and maybe not trying to play through them, but play in behind them. This is a, a pretty good attempt at that. Syracuse resorts to, to, you know, having to foul there just to kind of end that attack, but those balls can be dangerous. That's a foul that Ian McIntyre can live with. And this does, though, set up a dangerous free kick. Fessler with another chance. Fessler, another good server of the ball on Wake's side. A guy who would benefit Wake as well in these types of situations is Omar Hernandez. I think we may see him a little bit later, but he's also a guy who can change the game off a set piece in situations like this. We'll see what Fessler does with this one. Coach Muse highlighted Hernandez earlier in the week. Hernandez working his way back from injury. Fessler now. He takes a rip, and it flies wide left. Schilly had it covered, didn't want to touch it. It's actually a, a good strike, just a little bit off target. He does get it up over the wall, and it what did come down in time to maybe either catch the crossbar or, or duck under, but it was just wide. Both teams, both of these squads have talented players who can curl balls, bend balls, and, and you know make you pay for fouls in dangerous areas of the field. So far, haven't seen a ton of set-piece opportunity for either side. Wake with the only corner of the game. It's been more of this. Levante Johnson, aggressive after balls, labeled with the strike, deflected towards the end line. Syracuse still chasing the cross right to Alfin. Syracuse doing a good job of getting players forward, too. There's three players in the box there. Attacking in numbers. Wake on the counter with Baba Niang and Salim right there to meet him. In a perfect world, Niang you know, needs the ball at his feet to be dangerous. And he's not had many opportunities. The same with Roald Mitchell. Syracuse doing a good job of taking Wake out of what they would normally do. Coach Muse talked about the differences between having a Baba Niang or a Cooper Flax in the midfield. As you mentioned, Niang needs the ball at his feet. And Coach Muse said Flax is more of a passer. He'll look to play guys in behind. Well, and you know, we remember Flax and, and Kojima are two important players for this Wake team and really are, you know, players who play in the center of the midfield who are the engine room of, of the Wake attack, if you will. Um, but they've not gotten on track tonight. A cheeky stop from Salim slows things down. Forbes was looking for David Rona, the senior from Alabama. Really good sequence there by Syracuse, winning the ball, playing through pressure, keeping it moving. Rona's 13 on the near side. He came in for Vlad Wallent after the own goal. Wallent left the game with his left hand on his back. But Rona with plenty of experience. He started last year against SU. A game which Wake Forest won 2-0 on its senior night. As Baba Niang scored. And I, you know, I, I would, I, we haven't heard the last of Wake. Uh, rest assured, I mean, they're an experienced team. They've got some older players on the team, and they're juniors and, and a couple seniors here. So this isn't their first rodeo. Uh, they need to get through this half. They need to regroup. Kachewski very strong on the ball. Substitution in as well. Oscar Sears, 10 and white in the game. Johnson on the near side plays Kachewski in, but loses his footing before he can cross. 
Ian McIntyre mentioned the rain. Pitch could be getting slightly slick. Kuchewski having a good half of soccer, really showing up in the right places, connecting passes, changing it when needed. Saw Ian McIntyre there for a second, putting some instructions to the ears of Julius Rausch and Kurt Callum. Haven't seen the wholesale changes from either side just yet, but both teams with plenty of depth this year especially on the front for Syracuse. Well, and I think you'll start to see Coach McIntyre make some changes to keep up this kind of relentless pressure. You know, you want to keep people fresh. And the perimeter players especially who do a lot of the work and kind of stepping out from the core of the center part of the park to try and close people down. Garrison Tubbs, the center back, makes a journey into the SU attacking side. Crossfield ball from Escribano can't find Forbes. And here come some substitutions from both sides. The aforementioned Calvin Rausch coming in and Omar Hernandez into the game for Wick. He sends off Fessler. Omar Hernandez, the senior from Dalton, Georgia, played at a powerhouse high school program, was Gatorade National Player of the Year in 2019. He's missed all of August and portions of September with injury. He's playing in just his sixth game. Well, I think Hernandez is the type of player who can change a game like this. He's good on the ball. He can hold off pressure and deliver passes. Looks like Caleb and Roush filling in up top. Both Apoku and Johnson off the pitch. And Ian McIntyre now giving instructions to Camden Holbrook. So, Dean, just as I say, we haven't seen wholesale changes. We've got. Yep, and I think both coaches are smart. They both played games on Tuesday night. They know people are not going to be 90 minutes. Singleman driving into the box. He goes down. A whistle from the referee still waiting for the decision. We've got a foul right outside the 18. Be interesting to see where he places this. I believe it's going to be outside the box. Right there, I think, is where we got it. Well, the, the foul occurred outside the box and carried over into the box, but the decision by the referee is to put it outside the box. Still, a, this is a dangerous set piece in a dangerous area. Look for the ball to be played, driven into the box. You don't want to give anybody reaction time here. Wake will have to be on task to, to clear this out. Caleb lined up for the service. A little dink towards the post. Looks like that was Christian Curdy who had the chance. Curdy very good in the air. Caleb actually decides to, to clip it up in the air, a little bit more lofted ball. But they isolate Curdy. And Curdy wins the header. And that's a clear height advantage on Jelani Forms. A three inch height advantage for Curdy. So you see some of the perimeter players for Syracuse being subbed out. Again, they're doing the, the hard work in terms of stepping out and closing down players and cutting out passes at the source. Jonah labeled off after a solid almost 40, 35 minutes. And Holbrook on, also Baselli off, Byros off. Colin Byros has started nine of the 11 games SU has played thus far. But Dean, you saw that you went to an SU practice earlier this week and you saw Baselli running with that first 11. Well, I think he's been on form lately. He's played well. Um, and it's proved out in this game. He's really been, you know, instrumental and in, in it's really been a team effort, but Baselli's done a good job in helping Syracuse keep the ball, but his pressure when he's on the other side of the ball has been very well, very good as well. Both Baselli and Byros transfers. You can see the rain really starting to come down out there. It was only a light mist, Dean, when we were outside for pregame, but 
seems to have increased to a bit of a drizzle. Does that precipitation make it even more difficult for Wake to play that heavy passing style of soccer? Well, I, I think it just makes the footing more, maybe a little more treacherous, but in terms of the passing, I mean, the ground is firm. It's not like the ground is soft. The ball skip a little bit more. Julian Kennedy's come in for Roald Mitchell. Wake now changing up a, a bunch of players as well. You know, if you look at the middle of their midfield, he's, he's changed Coach Muse and, and Coach McIntyre. It's kind of a chess match here. So in the midfield now for Wake, you've got Oscar Sears. You've got Omar Haran, uh, Hernandez. You know, uh, Suzuki still sits in behind them. He's given Roald Mitchell a little, little rest here. And Julian Kennedy is another, you know, imposing athletic player up front. See if they can... Get a little something going here. Kennedy and Niang can both step into that center forward spot. Oscar Sears on the ball. He scored the only goal in Wake's midweek match against Jacksonville. Demon Deacons outshot the Dolphins 13 to 3. And Jacksonville didn't have a shot on goal. Syracuse doing a good job of playing through pressure here. Singleman right on cue gives it away, but up until that point, just when they win the ball in front of their own goal, very careful and very calculatingly with precise passing, playing through the pressure. And Referee J.C. Griggs calls the ball back to the sideline. Another look at Bobby Muse going for win number 200 tonight. Started his head coaching career in Denver, where he had five double-digit win seasons, and he's now turned Wake into a national powerhouse. Coach Muse, a very uh, humble guy. You know, we mentioned to him, you know, the fact that this could be his 200th win. It's some, you know, he's quick to point out something he doesn't even think about, but you know, maybe someday he'll think about it. But right now, he's got as much anxiety and stress about playing this game as he did any of the previous ones to this point. And, um, he's more, more concerned about covering the details and, and winning the next game, whether it's his 200th or it's 100th. Right now his team's in a hole. Syracuse up 2-0 on Wake Forest, moving towards the end of the first half at SU Soccer Stadium. Giorgio Kachevsky scored on a PK and then Wake put an own goal in, got an offside flag there. Anthony Sinclair has been quietly having a good half, you know, in terms of sitting in front of Syracuse's three center backs and winning balls, important ones that won't, you know, that don't allow Wake to get any rhythm or get going with a passing sequence. Here's a look at Julius Rausch barely stepping off sides. Yeah, I believe Roush started from an offside position when he came back and joined the plate. Back to the scoring. In the 13th minute, Levante Johnson was fouled in the box. Prince Mponsa stepped on his left ankle, and Kachevsky stepped up. Cooley sent a rocket to the bottom left corner over a diving Trace Alpin. That made it 1-0, then 11 minutes later, Mponsa headed the ball into the back of his own net. He crossed Alfin over, really. Alfin expected the ball to be headed straight back to him, and Mponsa set it to the bottom left corner. Yeah, and I'm not sure Mponsa was even trying to hit it to Alfin. You know, I guess we'd have to take a look at it again. I think maybe even he might have been trying to put it out the end line, um, but clearly a, a miscommunication. Syracuse just sent the ball into the stratosphere, the practice fields that surround SU Soccer Stadium. You can, cut, you know, every time Wake has the ball, you can see a bunch of orange jerseys. Chance for Hernandez setting up Niang and Schobert there. Never the blanket of the SU defense. Booster Schobert. Omar Her Hernandez. This is a great, great penetrating ball, and this is what he brings to the to the club when when, when he's out on the field. You know, he has the ability to play that final pass, and that when he slips through.
to Niang, and, and I think the game's changed a little bit since Hernandez has come in. You know, he does have that ability to avoid pressure, connect, play balls like that. He's on the corner, but when he makes it to the first defender, Callum boots it towards midfield. Omar Hernandez has played over 30 minutes in his past two matches as he works back from injury. Is this a game where he spends more time on the pitch in the second half? Well, I, I think he came in late, so, you know, if the, the limit on somebody like him coming back from injury is, you know, 30 to 40 to 50 minutes, you know, it bodes well because he can, you know, he'll have that to play the remainder of this game. I, I, I do think he's been... You know, he's brought more to the team in the middle of the midfield since he's been on the field, and I think that's something we'll see in the second half. We'll see a lot of them. Another change for Syracuse. Noah Singleman to the sidelines and Jackson Glenn in the game. Both teams had games on Tuesday night, um, and you'll see they'll use a lot of players. I mean, Syracuse will play, you know, another game on the, this upcoming Tuesday, which is whatever, three games, so they're playing Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, that's three games in eight days. Most most places you don't play two games in eight days. So Coach McIntyre will obviously first and foremost try and win the game, but also be conscious of, you know, trying to get players manage their minutes so that they can survive on Tuesday's game. SU's next match against Loyola right after the weekend. Wake plays as well. They go on the road to William and Mary. Right, and Coach Muse talked to it spoke to it as well you know in their game against jacksonville on tuesday night they used a, an inordinate amount of players but 21 again, guys 21 guys to try and manage you know the minutes and you know this is the argument for the 21st century in a split season in college soccer you're, you're cramming so many games in such a short window um you know when you got to play three games in, in eight days that that's a difficult thing to do Baba Niang off and Chase Oliver on. Wake for the first time really all half, looking to build something in SU's attacking third. The ACC experimented with a split season in the COVID year, and you know, lo and behold, it really spread things out. It was good for the players in terms of, you know, physically, player safety, not having to manage such a heavy load of you know, intensity in terms of the number of games that they're playing. It also allows them to balance their schoolwork. So, um, you know, it's it's an argument in that direction. We talked to Notre Dame head coach Chad Riley a couple weeks ago. He said a lot of his players were against it because they like being a, a full-time committed soccer player in the fall than experiencing more of the academic student life in the spring. Right, and, you, you know, there's, there's mixed reviews on it, which is why in a lot of cases it hasn't, sort of gotten a foothold but from the standpoint of playing so many games in a short period of time the player safety issue is one that you can't really deny chance on the far side for roush righty strike skips across the box i think if you're awake at this point you, you got to get through these next two two minutes and change get to halftime regroup you know a team is as, as explosive as wake can be you know, can come back from something like this, but they've got to get through this half, and they're going to have to make some changes. Don't write off this Demon Deacon squad. It's a team that can score in a hurry. Put up five or more goals three times this year. Let's be fair to Syracuse. Syracuse did the same thing when they went down to Clemson. They're very good at taking teams out of what they do, and they've done a great job of that here tonight. Cross in as far as Amponsa, and he gets it out of out of harm's way. But we saw, I mentioned Notre Dame, Dean. We saw that against Notre Dame when Syracuse pressured the Fighting Irish to a point where they barely hit the ball. Right, and, and you know, Coach McIntyre does a great team. His team is very organized. You know, they understand their roles. And each guy that comes on, there's no drop off. And I, I think that's why you see them ranked where they are and why they have the success that they have. Syracuse still pushing forward. Just over a minute remaining in the first half. Barrows a little cheeky skill in the box, sends it in. Sinclair with a second chance. Forbes takes the ball off Calov, and both teams with a second to breathe.
players off the ball for Wake have got to get to spots earlier. The guys with the ball got to play the ball earlier. If they're going to want to have any success in keeping it, they just got to keep moving the ball. And that's something usually they're very good at in terms of speed of play and moving the ball from player to player. It's a little, little different, though, when you got somebody draped over your back preventing you from playing balls. And Syracuse has done a good job of tightening the screws and making sure players don't have time on the ball. Wake, Jelani Forbes has been the orchestrator from this near side wing. Other than that, not a whole lot to write home about. I do think this midfield combination that Wake has in the middle of the midfield right now may be, you know, something we see more of in the second half because they, they have done a little bit better job, but they've got to create some different situations now. Syracuse has a, put out a good half, a really good shift. Well, Bobby Muse, coach, thanks for the time. Thank you. About ready to start the second half. Syracuse, a 2-0 lead on Wake Forest. The Orange, seventh in the country. The Demon Deacons, fourth. Winner of this match takes the top spot in the ACC Atlantic standings. So, Ian, I think as we begin this half, you know, a 2 nothing lead is a dangerous, it's a dangerous scoreline from this standpoint. Um, you know, the third goal in the game is going to be very important. If Syracuse gets the next goal, um, it could really take the wind out of the sails of Wake. If Wake gets the next goal, um, you know, then they get the momentum and the belief that they can get themselves back in this. An early chance for Syracuse. Labeled crossed it in towards Baselli, who couldn't connect the header. Good attack right off the kickoff. Syracuse gets down the flank. Good cross in. Baselli gets across his defender to try and nick that in. Back to Shealy with Roald Mitchell up pressuring. Little change of formation for the Demon Deacons. Baba Niang is playing closer towards the left wing. And Omar Hernandez is filling in as the center attacking midfielder. Here's Niang at the far side of the box. Schobert there to clean things up. But, Dane, you mentioned Hernandez off the rip, and he's going to be an integral part of this second half. Well, and this is a good, good start for, for Wake as well. I mean, look, they're a team that gets a lot of corners throughout the course of a game. Um, and they've got a couple, I think, in the first half and leading off here with the, in the second half with another one. So let's see if they capitalize and can get something out of these. Fessler lining things up. See the rain coming down. It's been going ever since the midway point of the first half. A lot of players in the box here. Fessler's service can't meet the standard. And Syracuse with a chance to run. Labeled at full tilt, the cross field ball only as far as Garrison Tubbs. But this is the Syracuse pressure we saw in the first half, the orange back line after being stuck in the six yard box about five seconds ago, all the way up to midfield. Orange applying immediate pressure, but the ball served forward. That's a poke who's still working. Loves the cross in. It's over Johnson's head towards Christian Escribano. Wakes right back. Plays it forward. And again, Wake having trouble connecting in the midfield. This time Christian Curdy gives it away. Here's a look at Hernandez, out physical by Anthony Sinclair. Those are the little things Sinclair does that, you know, they're not going to show up in the score line or in the stats book, but, you know, just important little moments like that where, you know, he re-wins the ball, keeps them in their half of the field. Tubbs almost put Escribano in a world of trouble. Right now the ball is sticking in that Wake Forest final third. Now a chance for Colin Thomas and company to move forward. Escribano on the throw, and he didn't play last year after tearing his ACL in the spring 2021 season, the split season that you mentioned, Dean, in the first half. Escribano tore his ACL in a spring match against Notre Dame, but didn't realize it, left the game, came back in, practiced, and then played a match against Louisville the next week before he learned that ACL was torn. Yeah, it's uh, pretty amazing. He's back now and 
He's actually had a good season to this point. There's a big part of the wake attack, as you can see here, right on cue. Chance for him to cross. Schoberg again. Wake doing a little better job pushing numbers forward, which obviously increases their chances of keeping the ball because they got more players around it. Escribano as the right back in the back four, and Jelani Forbes as the left back. They're expected to get forward, but you need the ball in order for them to time those runs and get out of the back and into the attack. Escribano trying to ease the pressure. Played it right to Syracuse. Monte Johnson running forward for the Orange, putting the pressure on Jelani Forbes. Ball went forward to Bob and Ying, and he was running back from an offside position. Ian McIntyre told us in the 25th minute, with his team already up 2-0, nothing's changed. We're not sitting back, sitting on the lead. Going forward, looking for more, and the Orange have started the second half in the same vein. Well, they've got a game plan, and, you know, you stick to it, and, and you know, when you get inside, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes of the game, then you can start thinking about, you know, things you need to do to finish the game. And um, that early on, they need to stick with the game plan when they got the first goal early in the first half. Leibold ripped it through two. Suzuki there to clean it up. A second chance for Baselli, a collision with Escribano right at the edge of the 18. Both players clash shoulder to shoulder. And J.C. Griggs didn't blow the whistle either way. Well, shoulder to shoulder, and both knew the other was there. Ref didn't see an advantage either way for either and let them play on. They're big boys. It's big boy soccer, ACC soccer. <laughs> not, I don't think that's unusual to let that go. But it's been a rather free-flowing game, all things considered. Syracuse with seven fouls, Wake Forest five. Only one yellow card. It's a good sequence by Syracuse. Maselli can't get the final touch right. But again, the Orange keep it in the opposing half. This time, Noah Singleman cleaning up the, the laundry. Suzuki has to do a little wiggle work. Gets to the near side. Colin Thomas a chance to run. And Thomas goes down on his side. Yeah, it's a little it's slick, and it, it, you know, the surface of this field, it's still firm, but the top is, you know, slick. We've had a light rain. And players tend to do a little ice skating on this. Really starting to see the ball skip around as well. I pull up the radar right now, Dean, and the rain is passing over as we speak. I think, you know, the, the chances that Wake did create in the first half, or at least the two most dangerous ones, were basically to, to roll Mitchell and balls that were played in behind the Syracuse back three, if you will. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, the choice to play through Syracuse when they're pressing so high, um, it's one thing if you're able to play through them, but if you're unable to, opening the game up and lengthens, stretching the game out a little bit with balls over the top, maybe backs them off a little bit if you burn them out a couple of times. But Wake uh, has stayed with their, their style, if you will, and trying to see if they can find a rhythm. Wake attempting to put the pieces together and solve a very difficult puzzle. A Syracuse defense that's only given up five goals all season. Really good battle there by Garrison Tubbs to win that ball. Those are the balls they need to win to not allow Syracuse to get out of their half of the field. And, uh, good battle to win it. Shilly will take his time two-time ACC Defensive Player of the Week. Trotting towards the 18, he won it after a clean sheet against Virginia Tech. Of course, that honor came down before SU dropped the midweek to Cornell on Tuesday. It's the only time that 2-0 loss that Syracuse has given up multiple goals in a game this season. One of the goals off an own goal, the other off a penalty kick. Right. And then a third of SU's five goals, a 
allowed with 10 men on the field. Right. Levante Johnson running in a dangerous area, his cross deflected, and Ponce there on the second touch, and Nathan Apoku sent a Ponce sprawling. Oh, it's good effort here by Johnson to get into the box and get a cross in. It's well defended by Wake. Aponso does a great job of breaking the play up. You know, I think the, the biggest missing piece for Wake is, you know, after you break the play up, you got to get it going constructively in the other direction. And sometimes that's been tough for them to do tonight because there's so much pressure on the guy who does win the ball. Vaselli wanted a whistle as Takuma Suzuki was right on his back hip. Ball forward towards Johnson, went for the runaround. And that's a whistle, that's a card. Johnson down, taking an extra second, but it's Prince Amponsa who flashed his left hand to prevent Johnson from getting away. Yep, and you know, it, the right hand catches him in the neck or maybe up into the face. Um, you know, not, not something I think is intentional. It's obviously a foul, but Aponsa and Tubbs have been battling all day with a, a Poku and uh, Levante Johnson, and it, it's been a good battle, but nobody said it'd be easy. It's going to be physical. And both of Wake's center backs now have yellow cards. And both have to be very careful. Looks like J.C. Griggs is motioning for Levante Johnson to come off the pitch, but he's convinced the SU trainer and the referee that he's good to stay in. Rain's still driving. Okay. Right now, Syracuse set up for a free kick with four across the 18. And Giorgio Koscievsky standing over the ball close to midfield. 49 degrees, double-digit mile-an-hour winds blowing towards the far end of the, of the stadium. This is Syracuse in October. Koscievsky, the long ball. Intended for Salim, the first header there, the second not so much. Apoku flicks it backwards, and Baselli went down. Actually a good sequence there. Corner kick upcoming for the Orange, and Jonah Labolt's headed to the far side flag to take it. So if you look at this here, you're going to see Kachevsky serve a ball, and he's going to look to get it into... set up. Five in the box for SU. Here's the corner. And Suzuki got the header down and Wake gets it away. Sinclair towards Johnson and again the Demon Deacons push the orange back towards midfield. And Schoberg with the boot out of play. After the Cornell match, Booster Schoberg said that SU knows what's on the line in this contest. Top of the ACC Atlantic, a chance to take down a second top 10 foe this year. And he said, even though the Orange just played a very difficult 90 minutes against Cornell, might be a little tired, but once they step on the pitch, all that tiredness, that fatigue in the legs goes immediately away. And the pressure has been there all day from Syracuse. Footing may become an issue here as we start to see the effects of this rain. We've seen players slip earlier on. That's one thing we talked about pregame with Bobby Muse was the field and the difference in upstate New York as opposed to somewhere down south. Yeah, a little different. Grass is a little different. Bermuda down south. Grass here in this part of the country, Bermuda doesn't survive a winter. So it's a little sturdier. Here's the 
Here's Jelani Forbes, Wake's assist leader. He had a couple of great passes in the first half, including a curling ball which provided Wake with its best chance. Old Mitchell sent it into the palms of Russell Shealy, who made a diving save. But again, beginning this second half, Old Mitchell has been quiet. And it's been Nathan Apoku, you see him there, and Levante Johnson, who have done the majority of the of the pressuring. Oku makes it tough for Forbes. And those balls that get played back towards the end line or get played in behind the weight back four, Syracuse doing a really good job of, you know, pressing up first level players, the front runners, making sure there's pressure on the back line of Wake, and then the midfielders following in suit, staying joined with the front players, which really makes it difficult for Wake to play through. Escribano can't play a pass through Giorgio Kachevsky. First sub of the second half. Omar Hernandez off, and after we lauded his praises, he didn't really have much of an impact on the game. Oscar Sears is on. Sears, the junior from Sweden, 10 in white. Scored in three of the last four games. Poco doing a really good job there, just holding off pressure, picking out an orange shirt, securing possession. In the upper right corner, a look at SU's next game. Loyola comes to SU Soccer Stadium. SU's third game in less than a week. Here's labeled the righty chance. A little wide right. His weak foot for a reason. Basile, good job getting down the flank. Yeah, if that's on his left, might be a different story. Didn't quite get around it. SU had the ball for a second, but Anthony Sinclair called for the foul. There he gets a clip on Baba Niang, who's playing out wide left in this second half. Vlad Wallen, Wake's starting left side winger, left the game in the middle of the first half. Here's a chance for Wake. Roald Mitchell sends it into Russell Shealy. Still on for the Deeks. Sears, lefty, deflected twice. Niang plays it back. Here's Colin Thomas. And things slow down. Syracuse gets numbers back. Chance for Forbes. He's pickpocketed. Noah Singleman takes it off him and clears the danger. So it kind of goes a kind of goes against the nature of what Wake wants to do in terms of playing these longer, more direct balls over the top. But their best chances have come. You know, that's the third one that I've seen tonight where, you know, that's given Syracuse problems. They're running back towards their own goal, a ball that might get in behind them. Now they're, they're running back and having to deal with. And on, it, on that being the third occasion, Roald Mitchell has shown that he can be a problem um, and, and really create a problem for the back line of Syracuse and the goalkeeper. Mitchell getting a breather now is Leo Guarino, a sophomore from Long Island in the game. He's got three goals in his own right. He'll play up top on the back of Booster Schober. I think as this game wears on, if, if there isn't another goal scored, you're going to see Wake play a little bit more direct and try and getting forward quicker and bypassing, you know, playing through thirds of the field, bypassing, you know, the midfield. And I suspect you may see more of those balls over the top. Got another change for Wake. This one might not have been in the cards coming into this game. Nico Rabiu, the freshman from Schenectady, New York, he chose Wake over Syracuse. He's in the game. He'll play on the right wing. All right now, Johnson running at defenders. Gives it to Kachevsky in plenty of space. And Tubbs reads things before they develop. Card immediately coming out for Baselli. Clipped Sears in the heels. Yep. J.C. Griggs gave Lorenzo Baselli a talking to after his last foul, and now he puts his foot down. 
and actually, you know, Wake is off in the other direction and a promising attack, and, you know, that, that obviously halts the attack and draws the card. Almost a, more of a professional foul. Sears left it for nobody. So you're saying, Dean, that foul is a, is a positive for SU as, as it halted Wake's momentum? Well, it did, it, it halted the momentum and, you know, prevented an attack, but, you know, the other side of it is the referee recognized it. And, you, you end up with a card for it. Here's a Poku. Only one man in front. That was Johnson in the pass. Not in the right spot. Plenty of space if Suzuki can find it down the left wing. Syracuse holding a high line at the back, you, you know, which, you know, when a team is going to try and play through you, they're trying to keep things compact. Niang with a chance to run. Best with the ball at his feet. But his pass forward towards Guarino. Can't connect, but Baba Niang finally gets a chance to operate in where head coach Bobby Muse said he's best when he can turn and go towards goal. Right, when Syracuse presses, so Wake tries to play out, Syracuse presses for the front, you know, from the front half of their team. The back line has to keep the team compact by pushing up. If there's pressure on the ball, they can do that. If there's not pressure on the ball, they've got to, they've got to give ground. And the couple times that Wake has looked dangerous are those big balls over the top when there was a high line. Rabiu puts Curdy on the ground. Lefty cross in, skips to no one. Some fancy footwork from the freshman. Forbes on the other side to Niang. He's clattered into. That's Baselli again taking him down. Lorenzo baselli has got to be really careful. He does have to be careful, not just in the fact that he's on a yellow card and he doesn't want to get a second one, but also the fact that this is a dangerous free kick in a dangerous area of the field. Wake tried to play, play it in quickly, and J.C. Griggs, having none of that, blows the whistle and resets things outside the 18. We'll see what Wake does with this. Fessler had a close try in the first half. Sent one up and over the left corner of the crossbar. Hernandez out of the game. This might be one they wish maybe he could be standing in front of. Fessler over it. Right at Russell Shield. Never in doubt for the SU keeper. Strong palms. Keeps it 2 nothing Syracuse and didn't have to move that much. Nope, Shealy saw it the whole way in and the wall was properly set. So it worked like it was supposed to if you're the team on the defensive side of the ball. Shealy and his defense, six clean sheets. SU has seven as a team, the first with Lucas Donhauer in net. It was originally supposed to be a competition between these two goalies. Donhauer is out, and Shealy's really asserted himself. Well, I think, uh, you know, Shealy has, and, and Donhauer are both very good goalkeepers, and Donhauer took an injury. Shealy stepped in and has been very good. Nathan Apoku running into space. He's crossed into two white shirts. Johnson on the second try. Couldn't get any power behind it. Sinclair still running free. Cries of shoot from the crowd. Said he'll kick it out wide. And the cross in deflected. Sinclair again, kind of in the right place at the right time. Keeping it alive, keeping it in there. Making smart decisions when balls get partially cleared out. Chance for Wake to counter. Niang picking up pace. Forbes on the outside, here he is. Jelani Forbes, Wake's assist leader with the cross towards Guarino. And a late tackle on the outside. Abdi Salim picks up a card. The cross went into the box, and afterwards, Salim got Forbes. Forbes doing a wonderful job getting up the flank like he's done several times tonight. Abdi Salim coming in hard, trying to close down the cross and gets a piece of him. Salim was the defender who 
drew the foul in the box on Tuesday. That was the penalty kick. Cornell converted and went up. Would not concede that lead. Salim, after missing all of last year with injury, has worked his way back into the starting lineup. We haven't seen Olu Oya Gunley tonight. It's Christian Curdy, Schoberg, and Salim the back three. Another set piece chance for Wake Forest. Another delivery from Fessler. Almost a corner kick. The service in. Call of keeper, Sheely strong with the fists. Good service into the box by Fessler. Sheely negotiated the traffic. One thing we were talking about pregame, Dean. There are no real big guys on this Wake Forest team. The tallest, Garrison Tubbs at 6'3". If you look at this here, you're going to see that Sheely does a really good job of coming from a starting position there to punch that out. Good service. But Sheely up to the task, was able to negotiate all the traffic he had in front of him. Very difficult for a goalkeeper when there's that many players in the box. Anything that's inside the six-yard box is assumed to be the keeper's ball. But when an opponent puts a lot of players in there, you have to, as a defending team, make a decision. Are we going to put people in there to defend them, or are we going to clear it to make it half as many people for the goalkeeper to have to move through to get the ball, get to the ball? Subs for Syracuse up front. Roush and Kaloff in. Byros also checking in as well. Haven't seen Francesco Pagano today for SU, but hasn't attacked at the strength of the SU offense. Syracuse's two goals came both in the first half. Giorgio Kachevsky con converting a penalty kick in the 13th minute. And then a Wake Forest own goal. Prince Amponsa heading it in to the Demon Deacons net in the 24th minute. The game started to open up a little bit for Wake Forest in the second half, but not enough to where it's fully Wake style of soccer. Well, I, I think, you know, as you, you watch this second half unfold, you, you know, Wake, in order to play the way they want to play, they need bodies around the ball. They need people in spots early in good positions to receive passes. Um, you know, it seems like they're just out of sync. Uh, when players are in possession of the ball and they do have time, there's no one to play it to, um, or, or the support comes a little later uh, when players, you know, don't have the ball. You know, it, it becomes a difficult situation trying to find space and room to play. Forbes, a long ball forward. Right into the controls of Russell Sheely. Sheely did media ops on Wednesday. And in an interview said that he's got a pet pig in belly. Said she weighs about 135 pounds and he brought her to SU from his hometown of Cartersville, Georgia. You ever consider getting a pet pig, Dean? Can't say that I have. I hope his landlord's not listening. I'm more of a dog or cat person myself. I'll take either. I'm not, I don't really have a preference. There's Byros on the ball, plays it outside. Singleman low ball past Callum. But still a second opportunity. Escribano hit it right into the path of Camden Holbrook. Holbrook was rather unsuspecting. It just fell to him. Well, and it, again, it comes down to having bodies in front of the ball when the ball turns over, not being content to the other team has the ball and dropping off. Instead, the other team has the ball step up and put him under pressure, and that's the attitude Syracuse has taken all night. Gallup was offside. That's why he's not chasing it. Singleman sped up late. The flag still went up on the far side. just to finish that thought, when when the attitude is when you lose the ball, you step up in pressure as opposed to dropping off. That's what makes life miserable for 
you know, uh, wake in transition. They just can't seem to connect that first pass, or maybe they get the first pass in and the second one is difficult to come by. Those balls have been dangerous, though, the ones over the top. Coach Bobby Muse said in the midweek, they've got a style that's more easily disrupted than others. And the times they've played Syracuse in the past, they saw man-to-man -man press. Today it seems like a swarm of orange and blue constantly coming. Bobby Muse has some substitutes lined up at midfield. Chase Oliver and Roald Mitchell set to re-enter. Sears pings it out towards Curdy. Didn't get that right. Schoberg there covered. Schoberg has quietly quarterbacked the team from the back for Syracuse and done a very good job of keeping them compact. Really doing a good job of judging and maintaining the proper distance from back to front. Callum sashays his way through a few white shirts. Team shape for Syracuse has been a big reason for their success tonight. Holbrook dodging past Ascrobano, and it deflects away for a corner. Holbrook showing he can drive at a player and take players on. Earns a corner for Syracuse. When you say team shape, Dean, you mean holding that 3-5-2 formation? Well, the distance from the front of the team to the back of the team. If the front of the team is pressing, then the back of the team has to step up so that they compress the space that the team has to play through. Kalov with the service towards the back post. And Ponce there, second chance for Kachevsky, spins off his foot. This ball's going to get served in. We're going to see it served into the box. Into this area here. Went towards the back post where it was more white than orange. Well, in, in, in that particular case, you've got to find, you know, I'm not sure what the, the play was intended for, um, but the service, I believe, went to the proper spot. There are, you know, players in an orange shirt trying to pin, as we say, the, the white players, and, you know, you're matched up, and the problem becomes do you have enough room to, to maneuver and try and out jump your player. It's very crowded there. We've got a mass of attacking talent coming on for Wake Forest. Mitchell back in the game, Wallent back in the game, Sidney Paris and Chase Oliver, both wing players also in. As you enter these last 16 minutes of the game, Wake, there's nothing to lose by putting players forward. Holbrook serves it and almost found Roush. And Amponza pings it out of play. Syracuse has been attacking the left flank all game and almost found number three. Great ball served in here. Roush narrowly missing it. But does get in behind. Another corner for Syracuse. Another chance for Kurt Callow. Towards the back post. Schoberg there. Oui. Wide right. Callow with a great serve into the back post. Schoberg. An obvious target at 6-5. And he has arms extended, asking referee J.C. Griggs for a, a foul. Schoberg drew a penalty on Tuesday in the 89th minute when he was dragged down on a corner kick. So as we enter these final 15 minutes, you know, if you're Wake Forest, you're going to start pushing players forward. Um, you know, Syracuse is going to have to account for those players as they go forward. And human nature is, is, you know, looking at the clock, wanting the thing to wind down, but Syracuse has got to keep playing. Uh, when they get the ball, it's going to be important that they try to keep it. Best way to take time off the clock is to keep possession of the ball and keep it in the opponent's half of the field. Escribano found the feet of Oliver and then bounced through his legs. Wake, on the other hand, is going to throw players forward. 
Syracuse counter, a chance for Singleman to run. He's played the full match, almost all 75 minutes of it. So if you notice now, Syracuse is falling off a little bit now. They're going to start to get numbers behind the ball. They're not going to be so willing to press up and press them in their half of the field. Just making sure they have the proper numbers to account for the players that get pushed forward by Wake. Here's Niang on the far side. Combining with Sidney Paris, the Navy transfer, and Jelani Forbes. And wholesale subs coming in for Syracuse. There's Levante Johnson on the right. He drew the penalty in the 13th minute, which Giorgio Kachevsky converted into the bottom left corner. And then in the 23rd minute, an own goal. Lorenzo Baselli was the closest SU player to it, but it was Prince Amponsa, the Wake center back, who headed it into his own net. Johnson Apoku labeled an Olu Ola Gunley set to come into the game. This is the first time we'll see Oya Gunley tonight. So Oya Gunley will come in as fresh legs in the back. You know, Syracuse is going to bring this next group of players in to finish out the game and pull this last shift. It's Anthony Sinclair right now receiving treatment. A Gunley will bring fresh legs in in the back. Not sure he'll, who he'll go for. Won't be, uh, it'll be either uh, Salim or Curdy. Or they may bring him in as a, a fourth player in the back, which I wouldn't be surprised to see them do. They've been playing with three in the back. I wouldn't be surprised to see him bring Ole Gunley in as a left back, and they play with a back four just to have an extra person back there to absorb players as Wake pushes them forward. It looked like Sinclair got stepped on. Like Sidney Paris got one of his cleats. And right now, Sinclair is still receiving treatment. He's had a little trouble with injuries this year. He missed the UVA game with a shoulder problem and missed the entire preseason with injury problems. Now walking off the field under his own power. J.C. Griggs is at the midway line taking a look at this just to see if there's anything there that he needs to, to see or take notice of. That might be Niang with a late high arm. Maybe a head-to-head -head collision. St. Clair comes off the field. So there is a little bit of a break here. And one of the things that, you know, the referees are allowed to, to look at the video for a number of reasons. Um, they can determine whether a goal has been scored, whether or not, you know, whether to identify players for disciplinary matters. You know, they can determine if a fight occurred and, and identify all the players involved. And they can also review, you know, whether a foul occurred, you know, that maybe they didn't see. So I think that's what they're looking at right now, just to see if there's any reason to it there to be a card. So after looking at it, Griggs has decided everything was above board. Incidental contact and Sinclair seems to be all right. He'll be waved back on as soon as the referee gives him permission. Now J.C. Griggs, second of chatting with Babakar Niang. Doesn't look like anything too serious, just to keep your head up. Yang has tried to find a foothold for most of this game. He scored his first career goal last year in a win over Syracuse. But hasn't done much today. He's alternated between playing on the left wing and in the center midfield. And here comes Sinclair back on the pitch. He's right on cue. He intercepts the pass. And Kurt Calhoun plays it wide for a streaking Camden Holbrook. Holbrook immediately gives it away, but another chance for Syracuse to put the pressure on Wake Forest. And as you said early, Dean, you're either the team with the ball or you're the team chasing the ball. And right now, the Demon Deeks 
chasing the ball and chasing goals. Another chance for Syracuse and a collision in the box. Draws a whistle, Julius Rausch going into the body of Trace Alpha. Just a, a result, that was a result of a really good sequence by Syracuse. Possessing the ball, keeping it moving, playing one and two touch. Orange still with four substitutes and waiting on the sidelines. Happy now to ping the ball around the field and wait for whistles. So that, that becomes dangerous, even though that ball is not to a weak player, it's served in behind the Syracuse, what we now see as almost a back four. Um, the result being Syracuse players are running towards their own goal with the back of, to the field of play, and Wake can use that time to push players into their half of the field. Bob and Yang isolated near the corner flat. Now some help form serves it in. Mitchell and Schoberg, 1v1. Mitchell turns, shoots, deflect. Booster Schoberg's been a constant presence from side to side of the 18. Winning headers, deflecting passes and shots. And commanding a Syracuse back line, one of the best in the nation that's held strong today. The Orange haven't conceded today against the nation's best offense. Wake averaging almost three goals per game coming into this contest. They'd scored 31 best in the nation. And Syracuse had just given up multiple goals for the first time all season. Sinclair pushes it forward. Kalov can't keep possession. Here's Niang picking up speed. To Paris on the far side. Syracuse has to be careful here. Wake is pushing players forward. They're playing with three in the back now. Which means there's more players that have, that have moved into the midfield and up front. Bobby Muse having a little fun with the Syracuse substitutes. A couple of words back and forth. He's Four orange players wait to enter the ballgame. Gunley, Johnson, labeled a poku. All buying their time as Abdi Salim stands over a free kick near midfield. There's Byros. Camden Holbrook, who's been very active during this second half. Kurt Kaloff serves it in. Alfin, a strong catch. Took it right off the forehead of Rausch. And look at Salim anticipating the long throw. Took it right away from the path of Sidney Paris. There's one thing about this Syracuse back three team. They cover a lot of ground. Well, they think. You know, they're going to need to, and as I said, I, I think you'll see them move to a back four. Sinclair will be more in, in a holding role, and both wired players will start to be a little bit more reserved, but I think as you, when you see this next substitution come in, as we're watching right now. Boya Gunley with a slow jog towards the back of the Syracuse formation. An extra wrap on his left knee. Kellogg, Roush, and Holbrook put in a good shift, as did Noah Singleman. Noah Singleman exits the pitch for the first time today. Under 10 minutes remaining from SU Soccer Stadium. Syracuse and Wake vying for the top spot in the ACC Atlantic. The winner of this game advances to 4-1 and one in conference competition. So Syracuse has gone to a back four. Curdy 
Salim, Schobergen, a gun lead. Poku lays it back for Kachevsky, who gives it away. Tubbs on the takeaway. Place it towards Rona, who swarmed. Both labeled and Oya Gunley caused that pressure. Wait gives it away. We hear the calls of step from Bobby Muse on the right side of the touchline. Wants his team to get forward and in a hurry. But from back to front, here's Levante Johnson. A strong run, Jelani Forbes takes him down and takes the ball as well. Suzuki a cross-field ball. Walent back in the game. He's been quiet in this second half. That's a good ball there to open the game up. Here's Paris. Great in isolation situations. His ball towards the middle deflected. Rona comes on to it. Here's Oliver, met by Ola Gunley, and the ball out of danger. Rona doing a good job in terms of leaving that ball as it comes across the box. Good ball, it's switched to play. Drive in. Rona's going to get on to this, but he sees the player behind him. Nice little back heel. Ideally, he could looking to snap off a shot there, but Gunley does a good job of stepping up and blocking. Takuma Suzuki out of the game, Hernandez in. Paris the cross to Rona. Didn't strike it cleanly. And Anthony Sinclair just sends it anywhere. Time ticking, under seven minutes remaining. Syracuse's two goals came in the first half. The penalty kick from Giorgio Kachevsky and an own goal, Prince and Ponce had to get into his own net. And ever since going up 2-0, Syracuse has kept the pressure on. Ironically, the last game Syracuse played in, there was a penalty kick and an own goal, and they were on the other end of it. And they played for no Tuesday night. Ian McIntyre said his squad didn't really create until the last 10 minutes when they were playing with nothing to lose. Here's a Poku. One-on-one -on -one with Tubbs. Poku holding the ball strong. Labeled lefty strike. Oh, Skyward. St. Clair still cleaning things up. He'll have a go. That was a speculative effort from Anthony St. Clair, but one he might as well have taken. Had a great game. He's done well. Again, he does pointed this out in the past, but he quietly does sort of the dirty work in there that allows the rest of the team to, to shine. You know, he, he keeps possessions, wins balls. He's a ball winner. He absorbs the other team's attack. Try and buy time for his own teammates to get back in. Not always a glamorous job, but certainly one that any good team has to have somebody who fills that role. There is Sinclair, collision takes the ball off Bob and Yang. Johnson with the run around. Johnson with space. His ball behind label. Still a chance for Kachevsky. One run with Wallent. Service in. Opoku had the header chance, but couldn't deflect it on goal. Levante Johnson does a nice job of getting forward. Ball eventually ends up over in Kachevsky's feet, tries to cross the fine of Poku. These kind of counterattacks can be dangerous. Wake taking chances at the back to try and push more people forward. It's a little bit of a gamble, but a gamble you got to take, you have to lose. Noah Singleman back in the game for SU. Two changes for Wake Forest. Julian Kennedy enters. Baba Niang and a swap of center backs. Prince Amponsa out and freshman Samuel Jones in. Both Wake center backs have been on yellow cards for the majority of this second half. Tubbs got his yellow card in the first half and Amponsa 10 minutes into the second period of play.
five minutes to go. Syracuse with a win atop the ACC's Atlantic Division. A four and one conference record. I think this is a Wake Forest team that's very talented. They came into tonight's game missing some key attacking players. But give credit to Syracuse, who never let them get comfortable. Time fly, time fly, that's you. Came out. Really tightened the screws in the midfield. Pressed them in their own half. Just never really let them get established and find a rhythm. Wake is battled, but just can't seem to string together the number of passes that they normally do. And a lot has played in Syracuse's favor today. Cold temperatures, a little wind and some rain, which has made thing diffi things difficult for Wake to connect passes from back to front. Uncharacteristic Demon Deacon mistakes. And Wake's tried to play its style, bringing on players aplenty. But overall, nothing's connected. Wake's played 20 players after 21 against Jacksonville, 25 against Clemson a couple weeks earlier. But besides two rolled Mitchell chances in the first half, the Demon Deacons haven't had many good looks on goal. Russell well, Shilley's had to make four saves. He's faced nine shots. This is a talented Wake team, and Coach Muse, not his first rodeo. He'll He'll get the group together. He'll regroup. They'll learn from this. They'll be much better for it. Um, Syracuse will take the three points and have to move on to the next one, knowing that you know, the next big ACC game. And Loyola is just waiting for midweek. So. Here's Johnson with a run. A shot off the back of Jones. Loyola comes to the hill on Monday. Not much time to rest for these Syracuse legs. What does that turnaround look like? Dan? Well, they won't be doing a lot of running, that's for sure. There'll be a lot of regeneration days in there where they're trying to get their legs back. Um, you know, both teams, and, and in this case, Coach McIntyre's trying to manage the minutes of the players during this game. He's used a lot of players as well, but still remains first thing first players got to recover so that they can perform on Tuesday night. Next ACC contest, a road trip to Louisville to face the 11th ranked Cardinals for Ian McIntyre's crew. Wake hits the road next Tuesday to play William and Mary and then the next ACC weekend contest against Boston College. Just about a minute left. Syracuse a 2-0 lead. Both these teams are, are, are so well coached in, in that, you know, both coaches will take this for what it's worth. You know, Coach McIntyre will take it back. They'll take the lessons learned, as will Coach Muse, teach their teams to be better at the things that maybe they didn't do so well tonight and move on to the next game. That's the only game to do. You know, you try to get better with each passing game and are going to be peaks and valleys. Bobby Muse still hasn't won at SU Soccer Stadium, and unless a miracle comes around, that's not in the cards today. Kennedy goes down. And the Wake Forest players frustrated. They want a quick restart. Hernandez pushing his men forward. Service in with 10 seconds to go. It falls towards the far post. Sheely falls on top of it. And the clock runs down. Syracuse, the better of the two top 10 teams today. The Orange take down Wake Forest 2 to nothing and take the top of the ACC Atlantic. Two Orange goals today, both in the first half. Giorgio Kachevsky converts a 13th minute penalty kick and Wake an own goal in the 24th as Prince Amponsa heads it into his own net. It's the second orange win against a top five.